Hi everyone. Got another basic skills video here for the classic mini survival guide. And what I wanted to do today was uh, using compression testers and leak down testers to check the health of your motor. Now, if you've just bought a car or maybe you're going to go look at a car, uh, you can either take the car to a garage and ask them to do this or you can, you know, follow along and, and do the test yourself. It's pretty self self-explanatory on how to use a compression tester like this. Um, they're not too expensive and they're easy to do. You can do it by yourself or if you have someone who can assist you, um, the better off you'll be. But why would you want to do a compression test and why would you want to do a leak down test? Well, a compression test will tell you how much pressure each cylinder generates when it's being crunk, crank over on the starter. So you either have 80, 90, 100, 120 and the higher the number, the, the healthier the engine will be. Now, that's not to say uh, certain engines are not as healthy as others if they don't have the same pressure. It all depends on how the engine's been built. So if it's a high compression cylinder head, it'll have higher numbers on the gauge than a standard compression cylinder head will. So uh, I don't know what the numbers are in this car. I'll, we'll find out as I test it. But if you see them all, say they're all 120 pounds across the board, then great. Everything seems healthy, at least with building compression. You'll also want to do what's called a leak down test. And this one, the uh, the gauge here reads in percentage of leak down. So when it reads zero, it means no air is leaking past the pistons or the valves. And this test, you have to perform it with the cylinders at top dead center and the valves closed. And I'll, I'll go through that once we get to this test. But basically this will tell you how much is leaking past your valves or your rings and give you an idea of the health of each individual cylinder in terms of where the air is going. And if you have a really bad leak, you'll be able to hear it leaking either, um, you know, if it's like an intake valve, it'll be leaking through the intake, or if it's an exhaust valve, it'll be leaking through the exhaust. So we'll start with the doing the compression test first. And to do that, just got to pull all the plugs out and get the gauge hooked up. It doesn't matter where this engine is sitting. You're going to crank it over three or four times and watch the needle spike until you reach kind of a peak, and then that then you're done on that cylinder. But let me go ahead and take these uh, plugs out, and we'll start with cylinder number one here. I'm really kind of looking forward to seeing these plugs. I fitted these plugs brand new to this motor after doing all my vacuum uh, hose repairs and other other engine repairs. So I haven't had a chance to even check these these plugs yet, but I'm hoping they're clean. I've probably put 100 miles or so driving this car around for all the... Uh, all the tests I've had to do. You seem to be running really well. If you want to find out what else was done to the car, you'll have to just have to check out the uh, the repair video on it. But in the meantime, let's see what these plugs look like. Oh yeah, perfect. Look at that, nice and white. Electro looks good. Yeah. These are GAP 35 thou, by the way, for this ignition system. Cylinder 4 looks good, same coloring. So one thing I always like to check is, are the plugs the same color across the whole engine? Because that'll tell you if you've got a problem with an individual cylinder. Yep, same thing. All right, let's see what number 2 looks like. Nice. All right, so all the cylinders seem to be burning the same, which is an excellent uh, excellent indication of that this engine is running well. And again, I did do a valve adjustment on this engine, and it's got a fresh ignition system, so any issues here would be head-related or ring-related. But let's go ahead and hook up the compression tester. Hooking this thing up couldn't be simpler. This is the spark plug end, and this has got a little quick release and a pressure release valve here. So... All you do is thread this in, thread this end into the block. And it just needs to be hand snug. There's no tooling because there's no ring down there that, that keeps the compression from leaking out. Plus it's got, uh, you know, no ring. There we go. All right, so I always zero it out first. And now we need to get it to crank over. So. This is where your assistant comes in. Either they need to get in the car and crank it over, or you're gonna have to do it here at the starter solenoid. 
And let me show you what I'm doing here in case you're by yourself. So on this later style pre-engaged starter motor, you'll see the main battery cable here, this fairly large boot, and the two main harness connections here. They all go to the same spot. This has battery power all the time on this post, this threaded post. Uh, this larger brown and red wire, I believe, is what the solenoid gets triggered with. So you can either take a screwdriver and touch it to from the main post here to this terminal here, or you can use um, like a self-starting trigger such as this and hooked up, hook up the two wires. And that's what I'm going to do is hook up the two wires. But just for demonstration purposes, I will go ahead and use a screwdriver to show that you can cross uh, this terminal here onto the solenoid, solenoid wire back here, and it'll crank over. So, there you go. With these injection cars, at least on the single point car, you can just disconnect the injector and then have your assistant crank it over by hand up there. But if you hook it up to the starter directly down here, and you don't have to turn it on the key, you can just crank it over using, using the, uh, the starter itself. And that's all you really need anyway, it's just a starter to spin. Um, so let's go ahead and test this one out and see what we get. Again, we're testing cylinder number one here. So we got uh, about 150 PSI. That's excellent. And we'll go ahead and write that down and release the pressure and move on to cylinder two here. Okay. Always clear your readings before you retest cylinder number two. About 145 ish. 140. Okay, so 150, 140. Let's move on to cylinder three and clear the gauge. About the same 140. Okay. And finally, number four. Let's see what it's got. Oh, about 150. Okay. So 150 on the outer cylinders and 140 on the inner cylinders. That's a excellent reading. Um, you want the readings to be typically within 10% of each other. And this engine appears to be very strong based on compression. We'll go ahead and do the leak down test next. So unlike the compression test, which just gets pressure off of the engine, the leak down test requires an airline hooked up to a compressor to make this operate properly. So I'll go ahead and bring the tester down here so you guys can see what I'm looking at. Uh, there's an input and an output line. Input line goes to the compressor. So I'll just hook that up now. So you notice the gauge went right to zero meaning that there's no leakage happening. Um, it's actually a little bit past, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a minor adjustment with the, uh, with the knob here. And you wanna make sure that it reads, you know, absolutely zero without being hooked up to the car. Once you've got this reading at zero, you can then hook it up to the car. Now, the engine does need to be top dead center for whatever cylinder you are testing. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate the engine over to top dead center for cylinder number one. And to make sure I'm setting it all up properly, I'm going to go ahead and take the valve cover off so I can confirm uh, with the valves as well that I am at top dead center. So I've got the valve cover off, and I'm going to go ahead and rotate until cylinder number one is at top dead center. So right now it looks like the exhaust is either opening or closing. So I'll just have to keep rotating it until both of these show closed. Um, but it looks like maybe... Three might be a top dead center. Either way, I'm going to use the uh, marks down there to see when they line up and then verify that I'm top dead center on cylinder number one. So as you can see there, I've got the engine at top dead center based on the position of the notch in relation to the tooth, the big tooth, that should be top dead center. And when we look at the head, we can see that the valves are closed for cylinder number one. So both the valves are closed. I've got free play on both of them. So this, this cylinder, cylinder number one, is at top dead center. So now we can hook up the gauge. 
hooking up the airline. Again, we zeroed this out just a second ago, but it's at zero now. So when I hook up the output line to the cylinder, I'm essentially putting pressurized air into the cylinder, and the gauge is going to tell me how much is leaking. Hence, leak down test. All right, so I can hear a little bit, and the gauge is saying 9%. Something like that, just under 10. Not too bad. I can actually hear it uh, leaking somewhere. Probably, I, my guess would be an exhaust valve. Now, what you can do is you can tap the valves lightly with a hammer and see if you can get the readings to improve. And if the readings improve, then you know that there's crap on the valve seats. And you'll probably have to take the head apart to do a valve job on it. But so far, I'm just seeing 10% on here now. So... I'll go ahead and rotate the engine, and we'll do cylinder number three next, since three is the next in the firing order, and then four, and then two. So we'll get a full profile of what each cylinder is doing in terms of leak down. Got the uh, number three topped at center. Once again, I can feel free play on the rockers, so this is topped out. And I just need to hook up the tester. Little air leakage there at the fitting, but uh, let's see here. Uh, so yeah, this has got uh, 24, 23 percent leak down. So just for fun, I'm going to tap the valves. We'll see if we can get this to come down just a little bit. And it's about the same. So yeah, so this this head needs to come off and get reworked because it's clearly got air leakage going on. And I can certainly hear it. I could pull the intake off. I could, you know, listen down here, see if I can hear where the air is leaking out of if it's an intake versus an exhaust. But yeah, it's definitely a, definitely leaking a bit more than the other one. But this is, again, this is why we do the test because even though these two inner cylinders were 140 pounds and the outer were 150, this has got another 15% uh, more air leakage going on than the other cylinder. So, again, you always want to do both a leaked out and a compression test to figure out what's going on with any, any engine. It gives you so much information about what's going on. So, moving on to cylinder four. And what's going to get you to rotate the engine 90 degrees to get cylinder four top dead center. So, once again, I've rotated the engine around. And I can actually see the timing mark once again down there because it's the same for one as for four. And I'll just go ahead and get this hooked back up here. And we'll find out what cylinder four has. Hopefully less than 25. And yeah, it's about the same. Maybe a little less, 20, 22, 24 pounds, or I should say a percent, 24 percent leakage. So three and four are leaking about the same amount, three being the worst. All right, let's go on to test number two. And finally, cylinder two is now hooked up. So let's go ahead and run it. Twenty-two percent. Okay. So realistically, uh, the head probably needs to have the head gone through and, and get the seats redone on the valves because, um, given the fact that cylinder one is in like the fifteen percent, the rest of them are all ten percent higher. It just means that most likely it's valve related. But either way, good to do the test. So now you guys get to see what the what a leak down looks like on a on an A series motor and and what potentially might be going on. Um, while the air is hooked up, you can certainly put your ear to the exhaust to see if you can hear it coming out the exhaust or if you can feel it. But uh, yeah, this is what it, this is what it means to do a leak down test. So if you guys thought this was interesting, helpful, or have other comments on leak down or compression tests, let me know in the comments below. Um, I do read them all and try to respond to them accordingly. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video.